Welcome to Talking Mopars, episode number 32, and show number four out of five in the special week-long limited series for Listener Appreciation Week. On tap for today, we have Project Car of the Day, high-performance parts listener stories, and we are once again taking a trip to Scat City, and this time, we're going to be riding shotgun with Don White as he tests a 1970 Charger RT. So without further ado, if you are a Mopar enthusiast, then you are in the right place. Don't go anywhere. You're tuned into the best Mopar enthusiast-driven podcast on planet Earth, and I am your host, Chris Albrecht, better known as the Mopar Hunter, and this is Talking Mopars. You're listening to Talking Mopars with the Mopar Hunter, your direct connection to all things Mopar. We are back once again celebrating Listener Appreciation Week here at Talking Mopars. And I gotta be honest, folks. I didn't realize what I was getting myself into when I promised you guys a new episode every day of the week this week. Um, It's been rough. I've been getting home late from work and then uh, playing dad for a little bit and then putting the kid and the wife to bed and then coming in here and recording these episodes and I've been burning some midnight oil, folks. I don't know how much I have left in the tank, but we're going to keep going until Friday, and this is going to be another fun episode. I'm having a great time. I hope you are too. Thank you for joining me. I'm really excited for this show, and to be honest, I've been really excited for all of these. It's been a lot of fun. This has been a great week so far, and good things are happening. As these episodes start to pile up, and I get to see how many people around the world are listening to this show, I'm humbled. It's amazing when I look at the map and I see how many countries have listened to Talking Mopars and all the stories I've gotten from all over the world. It's so humbling and I really appreciate it. I'm glad to have you guys as listeners and, you know, this show is all about having fun and talking Mopars. So, you know, I do want to throw this out there. If you have any comments, questions, complaints, suggestions, or concerns, or anything else that you want to talk to me about, you can reach me via email, and my email address is chris at talkingmopars.com, or you can even leave me a voice message at 209-28-MOPAR. You can even send your stories to me, and I will share them on the show. I'm just really impressed with the amount of people that have been participating in this show, and, you know, we've got some fun things coming up. I've got more episodes of Direct Connections coming. I know you guys like those. I've been getting nothing but great feedback about both of the Direct Connections episodes we had. The first episode of Direct Connections was with Chuck and Matt McMurray from Hemipages.com and ReadyChassis.com. And the second one was with Johnny Mopar, my good buddy. And we've got more on the way, so stay tuned for those. But for now, we're heading back to Scat City on episode number 32, which is right now. So, let's get this show on the road. You know, as long as I've been running the Mopar Hunter Facebook page since 2015, so we're going on five years, I've never been one to price bash. I usually just pick cars that I think are interesting or would make good conversation points. And sometimes I even love watching the controversy and I love seeing the funny comments and whatnot. Um, Some are a lot more creative than others, but uh, it's still fun to see what everybody thinks because everybody's got an opinion. Some of them suck. Some of them are really good. And some of them are right in the middle. But the project car for the day today is a car that I think is very ambitiously priced. And I got a kick out of looking at this car and how much the guy wants for it. I am never one to insult a seller. But I'm an honest guy. And I've had people send me messages asking me what I think about their ads or what I think about the prices of the cars they're listing. And I'll never lie to you. I'll always tell you if you're high or if you're a little low. Sometimes I'll tell you, oh yeah, you're high. (laughs) But with these cars, you know, people are only going to pay what they're going to pay. These cars are only worth what someone's willing to pay for them. So you can ask whatever you want. That doesn't mean you're going to get it. And for the sellers out there that have cars that are priced really high, don't be insulted when somebody, you know, reaches out and says, hey, that's crazy. For the people that talk smack, just ignore them. You know, everybody's got an opinion. You know, you could have the nicest car on the block with a decent price and someone's still going to say it's too expensive. But, you know, that's the beauty and the tragedy of the internet. 
You know, you get some really good opinions, you get some really bad ones, you get some really cool people, and you get some really bad ones. But I'm going to try to not be a bad guy with this ad. And I did not pick this car because I think it's an amazing deal. But I'll let you be the judge. Let me read this ad. This project car of the day was posted Wednesday, May 27th at 12 p.m. Here is the ad. 1971 Dodge Demon Original 318 Auto, $19,999. All original 1971 Dodge Demon 318 V8 Automatic, running, clean title in my name, non-power steering, non-AC from factory, odometer reads 21,000 miles, grandma's car, family owned, original bill of sale from Halloween 1970, no BS, OG build sheet, all original. Gold color. Driver door has been replaced with a door from a 1972 Plymouth Duster. I do not need to sell this car. I am posting it because some other person from LA is selling a straight six demon for 15 grand. Damn, that's rich. If this is what the market is like, then let me put my big toe in the water to see how cold it is. This COVID forced vaccination agenda does not scare me, so please call and leave a message. I will not respond to texts since there are so many scammers. I do not need help selling, and I will not consider any lower offers until you come and check it out. It starts, runs, drives, stops, and turns heads. It is currently registered and insured. Never been in an accident. Frame is rust-free and straight. All rails, panels, and rockers are rust-free. Rust in driver and passenger floorboards. Due to the fact it did not come with carpet. And this car is in Central California. Title status is listed as clean. Okay, folks, here we go. First of all, he says, I don't need help selling. Actually, you're going to need a lot of help at $20,000 for this thing. Okay, this guy is super ambitious, and he says he doesn't need any help selling, but hey, buddy, you need some help selling this thing. He also says that there's another person in the L.A. area selling a Slant 6 Demon for $15,000. And then he goes, damn, that's rich, but yet he posts his for $20,000. Now, is it nice? Yeah, the Demon's in really good shape. It's a great driver quality car that you can just go and not worry about it too much. It's got a V8, it runs, drives, stops. You know, you can't ask for much more than that. It is very high priced. Let me put it to you this way. If I saw this car for $10,000, I'd probably go, eh, that's maybe a little bit high. It's not a highly desirable model, and the short list goes on for reasons why it wouldn't even be worth that much to me. The problem with these cars is everybody thinks that if they haven't driven it in 20 years, it makes it A, a barn find, or B, something really special. I also think it was hilarious that he said he just wants to dip his big toe in the water to see how cold it is. Hey, buddy, it's really cold at 20 grand. I'll tell you that right now. But, you know, I admire his ambition. You know, he's really trying. The car appears to be pretty solid. You know, floorboards aren't that big of a deal. Um, I think it's one of those cars that you just have to look at and kind of enjoy its company while it's still around. (laughs) and my guess is this one's going to be on the market for quite a while. So, you know, he questions on how crazy the market is based on the price of one other Slant 6 Demon for 15 grand. That is ridiculous. So, you know, that's my opinion. I think the guy really needs to reevaluate his situation and look at that car really close and ask himself, would I pay $20,000 for this car? I'm looking at it, and you guys know me. I'm a huge advocate for adding muscle cars that are priced reasonably, and I don't believe $20,000 for a project like this one is worth it. But that's my opinion. If someone asked, hey, put a price on that car that's realistic, I'd drop it about five or six grand and go from there. $20,000 for this car is a very, very long reach. But hey, I wish the seller the best of luck with the sale, and you know it's a cool car, and I'm glad it made it this long in life. It could have very easily ended up being like a lot of the others and rotting into the ground right now. That's my opinion about this car. I think he should lower the price. I think he should be a little bit more realistic. You know, should he sell it for 15 grand? I don't know if it would even sell for that, to be honest. But I think it's a good starter car, but not for 20 grand. That's not starter car territory, not in A bodies. He needs to drop that price to, you know, 12 grand or something like that and then go from there. But if he had a solid offer for 8000 or 9000 I'd say take it. Just take it. Take it and run. But that's my opinion. And I'm sticking to it. That was Project Car of the Day. No Mopar left behind.
Today's high performance part is going to be a little bit brief, but it is a 1969 Dodge Coronet 500 painted Y4 gold poly with centerline wheels featured in the music video for the song Forgot About Dre by Dr. Dre featuring Eminem. In the music video, Eminem is seen driving this Dodge Coronet, pulling into a driveway drunk and hitting a couple garbage cans. He proceeds to throw open the door and then puke his guts out. That's about all I have to say about that. Don't drink and drive, folks. It's not a good idea. Thankfully, this music video was make-believe. It was sad to see Eminem drive this car and hit a couple garbage cans because the car looks really clean. It looks like a really straight Coronet, and I wouldn't mind having it. I kind of like the color, and center lines look good on any Mopar. That's just my opinion. Even though Kregers are my favorite, I'm still a fan of center lines. I'd rock a, I'd rock a nice set of center lines on a Mopar. That was High Performance Parts. Today's listener story was sent in by Brent Jackson. Now, if you remember earlier in the week, we shared Brent's first story, and then he followed that up with a voice message to tell us how much he paid for his 1974 Dodge Challenger. Well, Brent sent us in another story, so here is Brent's story. Hello, Chris. In addition to my 74 Challenger, which did do very well at the car show early March as it placed third in its class. I met Elizabeth when I had the car for a couple months and throughout the months into years of us dating. She had brought up in conversation that she would eventually enjoy a restoration project of her own. She had one stipulation and so did I. She said it had to be a truck and I said it had to be a Mopar. Liz originally wanted a 1980s CUCV, but since I imposed the Mopar rule she got to researching and found that Dodge held the military contract before GM in the 1970s. She was quick to love the tin grills of the 70s Dodge trucks and later found one for sale in Lincoln, about an hour drive from Omaha. The individual selling it owns a Mopar-specific restoration shop in Lincoln and has the 1970 Challenger RT440 that was mentioned on Project Car of the Week. After making a new friend and contact for my Challenger, I loaded up the shop truck and trailer and hauled the tin grill back home. The truck is a 1970 Dodge M880, which is essentially a stripped-down W200. The truck had a 318 with a two-barrel carburetor and a 727 three-speed automatic transmission. It was running and driving and 95% rust-free. Just a really solid workhorse of a truck. The thrill of this truck doesn't stop with the potential of what it could become, but what it was in the past. The truck was produced for the military base in Meade, Nebraska. After its service, it was brought to work for the local fire department until recently. The truck has a red paint job but still has the army green under the hood and on the undercarriage. It still has the military identification plaque as well as the fire department plaque on the dashboard below the glove box. Since then, I've helped Liz install a custom gauge cluster with Intellitronics gauges, and she rebuilt the original carburetor to keep it on the road for the summer. Currently, the 318 has been pulled for a slightly built 360. I'm incredibly jealous of Liz with this truck as a restoration project because besides body and paint, this truck is 100% complete and ready to go. We are planning on enjoying it as is for a bit before stripping it down for a full frame-off restoration. You're a genuine guy, Chris, and I appreciate the opportunity to share the second half of my Mopar story. I also look forward to every podcast on Spotify. The Challenger, for the most part, is complete, but I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the old military tin grill. I guess a couple that Mopars together stays together. Sincerely, Brent and Elizabeth. Brent and Elizabeth, the couple that Mopars together stays together. That is a great quote. I love it. I like these little love stories about Mopars. I think they're awesome. You got yourself a good one, Brent. I think it's awesome that Elizabeth wanted a restoration project of her own. And I think it's even cooler that she was like, uh, no muscle cars, I'll take a truck. That's pretty cool, especially a tin grill. We all know that I love my tin grills. And I love the fact that they're getting more popular. Between the tin grills and the swept lines, I think Dodge trucks are making a huge statement in the show scene. And they're getting more popular, so... I always say, get them while you can. Keep me posted on all your projects, guys. I love hearing stories like this. It's always fun, and you may not realize it, but your story may be motivating somebody else to get their project done. I've had a couple people reach out to me and say that the podcast had a lot to do with them getting back into their own projects. And for me, that's really cool. I am proud to say that this show has been a part of that for so many different people. And the foundation for this show, I've always said, has been listener stories. So thank you guys for sending in yours. Not only do you have your muscle car, but you have a truck too. That was Listener Stories. Don White tests Charger RT on the road. Who could ask for more?
Don White Dodge Charger race driver, USAC stock car champ, 1963 and 1967, all-time 39 races stock car winner in USAC history. You know Charger. Every race fan's idea of a real automobile. One that looks good and seemingly drives itself at any speed and has a feeling of complete control. That's Charger RT for 1970, is the optional mechanically adjusted six-way driver's seat. It works just as good as most power adjustables and makes those long trips between racetracks a whole lot easier. Charger RT is my kind of car. Soft suspension and plenty of backseat room for the crew. I don't do too much drag racing, but at the sanctioned drag strip, I topped 100 in the quarter with my street Charger RT. It was equipped with a 440 Magnum V8 coupled with the Torque Flight Automatic Gear Changer. Replace that with an optional 440 V8 six-pack, three big Hollies on high-rise manifold, or the Hemi 426, and you'll do even better. There's a four-speed manual Hearst selector available also, the kind I use on my USAC Stalker. Incidentally, Charger RT's Torque Flight this year has a new stick shift gate that's as fast and sure and crisp as any manual shifter, but quicker. All in all, Charger RT is one of the greatest buys a true performance-minded guy could find anywhere. As I said, Super B may outdrag it, but what other race cars can offer Charger RT's features? If you gotta go quick, go Charger RT. But remember, do it at the strip. The 1970 Charger RT that Don White test drove had a 440 Magnum V8 pushing out 375 bhp at 4600 rpm and 480 pound-feet of torque at 3200 rpm. The Dodge Charger was as much of a beast then as it is now, and the first four cars, you have the Dart, the Super B, the Challenger, and now the Charger RT. Join me again tomorrow when we go back to Scat City and we take a little ride with Bobby Isaacs in a wing car. Now leaving Scat City, please come back soon. That is a wrap, my friends. Episode number 32 is in the books. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. For more information about the show, please visit TalkingMopars.com. And if you have anything on your mind, you can reach out to me, Chris, at TalkingMopars.com, or leave me a voice message on my voice mailbox at 209 28 Mopar, and you may just hear yourself on the show. Also, remember, on Friday, we're launching the Talking Mopar store where you can purchase cool things like shirts and stickers and more. We'll have stuff for guys, gals, and even the kiddos too. So, if you want to help support this show and get some cool stuff in return, be on the lookout for the launch of the store on Friday. That is it, folks. Until we talk again, I am your host, Chris Albrecht, and that was Talking Mopars. Thank you for listening to Talking Mopars, your direct connection to all things Mopar. Until next time, remember, no Mopar left behind. This summer, you need clothes that you can wear anywhere. For that, look to American Giant t-shirts, shorts, jeans, and sweatshirts. American Giant makes everything in the USA, so when you buy, you create jobs and improve local communities all across the country. Shop summertime closet staples at American-Giant.com and get 20% off your order when you use code WA23 at checkout. That's 20% off at American-Giant.com with promo code WA23.